Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. I'm Michelle the Painter. Today I'm going to be painting Christmas Cat and I'm sipping on some hot cocoa. This painting that I'm doing today is inspired by a photo that one of my Patreon members by the name of Becky Yamaguchi sent in. I have a benefit available for my Patreon members whereby every now and again I'll put out a call for photos. I'll select some of them and turn them into YouTube tutorials and as a thank you I will send off the original painting to whoever submitted the photo. So. I hope she likes this painting. <laughs> so if you're interested in learning how you too could, could submit a photo for me to turn into a tutorial and or learn more about the Patreon membership program because there's a bunch of other benefits that you get to enjoy that will help you along in your painting skill set. I have all of that information down below in the video description. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting alone, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, burnt umber, which I like to call brown, <laughs> Mars black, fire red, chrome yellow, green oxide, and cobalt blue. And of course, you can switch up those colors if you like. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'm going to be using for some drawing, and I have three brushes from my personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a three-quarter inch wide flat bristle brush, and I have a number five round synthetic brush, as well as a number two round synthetic brush. And I might refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process, or I will call them out specifically by name. And of course, you can switch those up if you'd like. If you're painting along with me, you're probably going to want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I do provide you with a few additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link to my shop where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of canvas to the same type of paint and brushes and all the good stuff in between. You can also purchase from my shop things individually like the brushes from my brush line. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting a base coat onto the canvas. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush to paint, but I'm gonna use my medium round to pre-mix a custom color. The colors I'm gonna use in this step are brown and white, and I'm gonna pre-mix a tan color, which I have magically already done on my palette here so you can see where I am headed. This is the color I have here. How I achieve this is just black or brown and white. So you can go, you can start with about equal parts of both and then mix them together and then adjust it accordingly. If you want it a little bit lighter or a little bit darker, but about equal parts of both will get you in a similar um, tone to what I have. So somewhere in through here works out just fine. Once you've got it mixed in the color that you'd like, you can put your mixing tool away, take out your um, large bristle brush, and all I'm going to be doing is painting the entire canvas with this color. So I'm using this as a nice neutral base for the, um, for the painting. You, of course, could go with a white background and just paint all of your details on top of it. But for me, when I am using a photo reference as inspiration for this painting, and when I'm looking at the photo reference, I do see a lot of this neutral tan type of tone throughout the entire painting, so when, or throughout the entire um, photo. So when you're trying to emulate a photo or a, a composition and you're trying to figure out how to kind of 
put it in place and, and start that process. Sometimes just finding a common color in the um, in that photo or in that um, that whatever your inspiration is, and using that as the base color for the entire canvas or um, surface can help build those tones and shades and colors in a more natural and easy easy process type of a way because you've already kind of identified what that dominant color is going to be and you've used it in a kind of a no pun intended but a little pun intended broad stroke kind of way across the canvas and then it makes adding those details on top of it a lot easier sometimes and then what I've got here is once I've got the paint on the entire canvas I do like to make sure that I have um, fully covered the canvas and or made sure I don't have any really thick spots so once it's all on here I just take my brush and with a light pressure go back and forth left to right this will help to catch any spots that I might have missed and or remove any um, what I refer to as cut marks which is the marks that show when you stop your brush halfway through or when you stop the brush stroke so sometimes that can happen and that's all I'm going to be doing for this step once you've got this done you don't need a second coat because we've got lots of painting to do on top of this uh, we are going to be using our drawing utensil for the next step so you can put this brush away take out a drawing utensil and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be drawing an outline for our ornaments and our cat. I'm gonna be using my chalk. I do recommend that your canvas is dry before you start this step. And of course, you can use any drawing utensil that is comfortable to you. I'm gonna be guiding you through a series of markers and we're gonna be connecting those markers. And by the time we're done, we'll have a nice, basic outline with no fine-tuned detail of some big shapes that we'll be able to utilize during the painting in process. So I'm going to first guide you to find the center of your canvas, top to bottom, left to right. For me, I've already marked mine, so I don't lose where it was. So this is about the center of my canvas. I like to give you um, the center a lot of times just because it gives us a point of, of reference that we can use it to, to, turn, to determine where certain things are in respect to other things. So that way, when I give you a marker, I can say, oh, it's close to the center by this amount. So we can have those uh, perspective type of marks. So then what I'm gonna do, we're gonna make a big ornament down in this bottom right hand corner first. So if I find myself the bottom right hand corner, I'm gonna come in about an inch, give myself my first marker. And then I'm gonna find myself about the center point of the bottom of my canvas, somewhere in through here, and go to the right about three inches, give myself another marker. Then I can find myself the center of these two, about, <laughs> and come up until I would say I'm about two inches below my halfway mark. So if this is halfway up or down, I'm about two inches below that. That's my third mark. I can now connect these three and have my first ornamental, partial, circular type of shape. So that'll be my first one. My next one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come to the right of here and up just a little bit on the edge of my canvas, somewhere in through here. Then I'm gonna, if this is my halfway point up or down my canvas, I'm gonna find myself about the quarter way point and come down just a little bit from that. That'll be my next point. I'm gonna find myself the halfway between these two, which is about here, and come over to the left, which I'm almost at the, I'm a little bit higher than the halfway mark, I think, and I am, if this was where we put the top of this one, it's over to the left a little, maybe about an inch and a half, somewhere in through here. And then I can connect these three, like this, and give myself my next ornamental shape. So the next one I'm gonna do is up at the top of my canvas. So I can go directly up, find myself that center point, Go to the right of that about an inch, inch and a quarter, to the left about an inch, inch and a quarter, and then down maybe about two, and a, two, two and a half inches, somewhere in through here, and then give myself another partial circular shape. And then I got one more big one over here on the left hand side. So if I come to the top left hand corner and come in, I would say um, if this is about the quarter way mark, I am a, maybe an inch and a half shy of that. So maybe about three and a half inches over to the right, somewhere in through there. And then on the left hand side, 
this is about my halfway. I'm just below that halfway point right in through here. And then the uh, third marker, you can find yourself halfway between these two, and then come over until you're about a quarter way into your canvas, somewhere in through here, or a little bit shy of your quarter way. And then you can take these three and connect them like that. Now I'm going to do my cat head. So if I come, um, my, I would say up from the center until I am maybe about uh, one, about two, two and a half inches away from this circle, somewhere in through here. And this doesn't, it, nothing has to be perfect. We're just giving you, uh, you know, in respect to each other, hopefully you'll have good uh, proportions when we're done. <laughs> so I've got that marker in through there. Then on this circle in through here, I'm going to come about one, two and a half inches down to the left from the top center, somewhere in through here. And I'm going to connect here to here with a big kind of curved line. And then I'm going to find myself down, back down at the bottom of my canvas, at the center bottom of my canvas. If I find myself about the quarter way mark, halfway between here and here, that lands me right about here. I'm just to the left of that, so somewhere in through here. Now I'm going to connect here to here with the other side of the cat head. So I'm going to go all the way to the left here, round it out. It's pretty close to this ornament, and I'm bringing it out further than my bottom marker and then just bring it back in something like that. The cat's head and body is twisted and it's looking up at the viewer from within the, the Christmas tree. <laughs> so it's it kind of got a funny angle in through here. So then I need to make a couple of ears. So I'm going to find myself back at that top center point where I had um, already designated. I'm going to go to the left of that about an inch and to the right about an inch. And then I'm going to go uh, to the left of here, down that curve of the head, I would say maybe one, two, three and a half inches. Find myself the center of those two markers and go kind of a little slightly diagonally up towards the edge of my canvas about an inch and a half away. Now I can connect these three markers with my ear, something like that. So I have this marker in through here, going to travel down about three, three and a half inches, somewhere here, which is almost about that halfway marker of the canvas, somewhere in through here. Find myself the center and go diagonally out about three inches or so. The left ear and the right ear, again, I'm using a photo reference. They aren't exactly the same. One of them looks to be a little bit larger than the other. So if yours are not exactly the same, it's okay. And at the angle we're seeing the cat, we're going to see a part of its back somewhere in through here. So I'm just going to give myself a little kind of curved line that goes behind the right ear and then our right ear, the cat's left ear, and then in through here. And then I am going to mark off where I want my eyes. So I'm going to come back to the center of my canvas. I'm going to come down from that about an inch and out to the left just a little bit. And then I'm going to give myself a big curved line for the top of the eye like this. And then I'm going to give myself a, an, a bot, an under curve that is going to give me like an oval almond type of a shape for the eye. Then I'm going to come to the left of that, almost the same distance as that eye itself, as that first eye that we just did. So you can kind of measure that eye and then go from the corner. It's going to be that inside part of the eye, the corner, and then give yourself another marker. The cat's head is a little tipped, and then you can give yourself another curve. That's kind of similar to the first one, and then do the same exercise with that under curve as well. So something like that will give you that. I'm going to mark my nose, which is going to be between those eyes and drop down maybe about an inch and a half. Just give myself a little kind of curve like that and then uh, go straight down from the nose and a reverse curve for the mouth about an inch away from that. And that's all I'm going to be doing for my outline. I am going to be using my large bristle brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can make any little fiddling adjustments that you feel are necessary and put your drawing utensil away, take out your large bristle brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're painting the base coat onto our ornaments. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush to paint, but I'm going to be using my small round to premix two more custom colors. The colors I'm going to be using in this step are red, blue, yellow, brown, 
and white. And I'm going to be pre-mixing myself a lavender color and a gold, metallic gold color. So I have pre-mixed those two colors on my palette here so you can see where I am headed. So this is my lavender color in through here. How I achieved this is red, blue, and white. So the recipe is more red, just a teeny touch of blue, and a little bit of white. The blue will take over. Well, they both kind of take over, but the blue, I feel, is more powerful and will turn it more... Um, blue faster than red. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but just add the blue a little bit at a time is the moral to my story. And just a little bit of white until you achieve what is a pleasing light lavender type of color for you. So that is a little bit too dark. I'm going to add just a little bit more white into it. And I'm going with these colors because, again, I'm using a photo reference, and as I'm looking at the ornaments in the um, in the photo, I look. I was looking for dominant colors um, within the sparkles because there's a lot of sparkles and they're very reflective, so there's a lot of colors within them. But I was seeing a lot of this lavender tone as well as a metallic gold color. So that's where I'm going for my base tones on here. So this is my metallic gold type of a color. How I achieve this, whenever I think of metallic gold, I always see yellow and brown in my head, <laughs> So, which turns into kind of like a muted green, soft green. So I've used brown, yellow, and a little bit of white. And this is gonna achieve a nice golden color. That's a little bit too yellow, so I'm adding some more brown to it. And again, I just take a little bit at a time and start spinning it around and adjust it accordingly. So if it was too brown, I'd add more yellow. If it was too yellow, I'd add more brown. If it was too dark, I'd add more white. So you can adjust it just with a little tiny bit of paint to achieve the colors that you want. So the, that's what I'm headed for. So now what I'm going to be doing is I've put my mixing tool away, take out my large bristle brush. I'm going to start with this guy over here. I'm going to be putting the lavender in the main kind of center area of the ornament where I want the ornament to pop out the most. Then I'm going to be putting some gold around that and then I'll put brown around the exterior to give it some dimension. So I'll do my first one here. I'm going to be applying my paint with a stippling or dotting technique. So I take my paint and I'm going to be dotting it like this. So this way I don't have a um, solid color. It will allow me to have kind of these little speckly marks. Now, without washing my brush, I'm going to pick up some of my gold and I'm going to start dotting the gold into it around the exterior. And you can even dot some of it right into that, um, that lavender area. So this is going to give you just a real nice kind of um, transition into that exterior dark now I'm going to pick up a little bit of my gold and brown as I go towards the edges. So you can have smooth edges. You can kind of take your brush and smooth it out like this, but I don't want a smooth line entering into here. So I give a smooth line like that and then start dotting it into the center or into the main body of that, um, of that ornament. So pick up a little bit of brown. I can kind of put a little bit on that edge and then just start tapping it into my ornament. So putting it around these edges like this is gonna give that ornament a lot of dimension. And then I just start tapping. And you can even bring a couple of these darker dots right into it. And just remember that this is just the first layer of the ornament, so we'll add much more sparkle to it, but I don't wanna over blend it because I wanna be able to have those um, those little shadowy areas between the, the sparkles. So I'm just gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel, pick up some of my lavender, and proceed to the next one. So I just picked up some lavender, and it's okay if you have remnants of your brown or your gold still on your brush, that's totally fine. It's just gonna allow for this to work out nice and have lots of color dimension to it. And if you can still see some of your tan underneath, that's my intention. So you, the tan is also one of the colors in the ornament. So you can certainly just allow for those, all of those colors to show. You don't have to, you know, cover up all of them. I just picked up some brown with a little bit of my gold to get these edges. And again, just kind of 
going around the edge while it's still wet, start to tap it. And even if your edge ends up looking a little fuzzy, that's okay too, because that'll just make it look like the, the, um, the ornament has even more sparkles on it, like that, those um, almost like sequin type of sparkles. Again, just pick up more brown, give myself a nice line around here, and then just start to dot it. And allow those, some of those dark marks to happen in the middle because that's going to that's going to allow uh, it to look shinier when we put the when we put the shiny marks on. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to go over here to this big one over here. I'm saving this one for last because it's going to have a little bit different of a brush stroke. So again, I just picked up my lavender without. I didn't even wipe my brush off on my paper towel. I just went with whatever was on my brush at the time. So picking up some of my lavender, putting a big area in the center. Now I'm picking up some of my gold, and again, just kind of dotting it on here so I have um, those colors kind of intermingling with one another. And then I'll go ahead and put the brown around the edges. And I'm, again, I'm dotting it into the lavender as well and allowing that lavender to, to take form. And again, I just picked up some brown. I have lots of the gold already on my brush, so I didn't need to pick up more of the gold and just kind of getting around those edges and then just dotting it into the center and then just getting this edge too. And you don't have to make it super dark all the way around. So if one edge is a little bit lighter than the other, that's all right. That's just meaning that it's gonna have more of a light source kind of sparkling on it. So that looks pretty good. So this one up in here, this top one, I want this one's gonna look more like a crystal type of um, ornament as opposed to these sparkly, um, um, sequin type of ones. So I'm going to use more of a graphic type of brush stroke. So there'll be more kind of lines in it. So I'm going to just start with a little bit of my lavender and I'm just kind of pulling down some lines like that. Now I'm going to pick up some of my gold and do the same thing with just some gold kind of lines, if you will. And I know that I'm not I can't get great accuracy with this type of brush for this. So this again is just gonna be my first step on it. I will later make some um, more distinct type of little shapes and, and marks in it. But right now this is just getting me started. And then we're gonna use this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> excuse me, a little tickle in my throat. We're gonna finish this little background behind the cat. I don't need to do anything to this little sliver right here because that's gonna be filled with dark evergreens from the Christmas tree, as well as this corner is also, and up here we're gonna have lots of evergreens kind of draping over and this corner as well. But I wanna make sure wherever there's gonna be a little peekaboo spot that it looks like it's finished. So what I'm gonna be doing, I'm using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm gonna use are lavender, white, tan, and brown. And I'm really just gonna give myself a kind of an out of focus appearance as if maybe we're seeing a little bit of the wall behind the cat um, and maybe it's a little bit lit up down in through here. So I'm going to start it kind of light down here and then scoot some of the um, color in through here and then just maybe get it darker over in through here. Starting down in through here with my, <clears throat> excuse me, my uh, lavender, tan, and white about equal parts of those three colors on my brush. And really what I'm looking to do again is just make sure that I have a second coat on the canvas and that it looks like it's fully executed. You can even uh, go right up to your ornament, bump into it if you need to. I'm just using kind of a soft circular type of brush stroke in order to um, make it just look out of focus. As I come up and through here, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of my lavender plus a little bit of my tan. So I did not pick up any more white and I'm just gonna scoot this up right to my cat, right to my, um, my ornament. And this is just gonna give you, a, as if 
you know, maybe the wall is being lit up a little bit. Now I'm just picking up some of my lavender as I come up behind this ear in through here. And I'm not afraid to bump into things like my cat, um, like my ornament, again, because I know that I still have work to go on them. So this is just my finish the background and all these things, other things are going to come on top of it in a little while. So now I'm going to pick back up some of my tan as I start coming over to this right hand side, just making sure that I've got a nice fully executed um, layer of paint on here. And I'm now going to start picking up tan plus brown. So you can see how I'm just kind of went light and I'm starting to get darker and darker as I go over into here. I don't want to lose my outline for my cat because to me, I put that outline there for a reason, so I don't really want to lose it. So I am going to make sure I go up to it, but not, um, not totally lose it. If you choose to do a, a much different color for your, um, for your wall behind your cat and you feel that you need a different color for your outline so you don't um, ruin it, then you can certainly um, almost paint an outline if you want to with of your cat so you can see it. I just picked up just brown so I can go even darker up in this left hand corner and again this is all going to be hidden or disguised by the tree and evergreens. I just want to make sure that I have a fully executed layer on here and again just a little bit more brown up in this top left hand corner picking up a little bit of that tan too just to soften that color a little bit there we go and then uh, once you've got this step done we are going to be using this same brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready all right so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna put the base coat onto the cat I'm going to be using my large bristle brush to paint, but I'm going to use my small round in order to premix one more custom color. The colors I'm going to be using in this step are tan, white, red, yellow, brown, and black. So I'm going to premix myself what I'm going to call a blonde color. It's kind of like a caramel type of light blonde or light brownish blonde hair kind of color. So I have already pre-mixed it right here so you can see where I'm headed with this color. How I achieve this is red, brown, red, a little bit of red, brown, a good amount of brown, probably like twice as much brown as the red, and then a little bit of yellow, and then a touch of white as well. So, and then you just kind of mix them together and see what you get and then adjust it accordingly. So for me, I'm pretty close to what I have over here, but I, I feel I need a little bit more brown in it to make it darker and more on the brownish side to get it closer to the color that I had pre-mixed in through there. So this looks good to me. So that's all I'm gonna be doing for that color once you've achieved and you don't need much of it we just got a couple little areas on the cat that are going to be um needing it but you can make as much as you want <laughs> so that's where i'm headed with that so i can put my mixing tool away what i'm going to first do is i'm going to be tackling the dark areas and working my way to the light areas so the eyes are going to be dark there's uh this cat has almost like a black outline around its ears it's got a dark patch in through here. The um, fur on its body appears to be darker, but that just could be because it's in the shadow. So we'll hit some of that with some dark color. And then this blondish color that I have, there, the, it looks like this is kind of a calico type cat. So it's got a brownish gray type of patch in through here. And then there's almost this blonde tone, this caramel color in through here, inside the ear, um, and in a big patch over in through here. So we'll hit those with these with these um, darker colors. And I'm going to put a little bit of pink on the nose and the mouth, and then the rest of the cat appears to be of a white fur. So we'll be starting that process with our tan and white in order to get um, 
that texture to start to occur. So I'm going to start with my black, but I'm going to have very little on my brush. So just a teeny tiny touch on the tip of your brush. You don't need much. And I'm going to start with my eyes. So my eyes, I don't need my um, color to be fully executed at this point. I'm really just looking to put a base coat on here. My eyes are very dark on this cat um, because it is so in the darkness of underneath that tree. So I don't need to, um, we're not going to be doing a whole bunch of detail on these eyes. Just want to make sure that I've got a nice dark kind of start to them. And I'm using the black nice and softly like this so I, it will intermingle with the fur around the edges of the eyes as well. So that looks pretty good to me on that. So my other dark areas or my other black areas are going to be around the edge of the ear so or ears. So I'm going to take this and just kind of pull it in, in through here. It's going all the way around the ear. And I love using these bristle brushes to do fur simply because it allows me to get these soft and really natural kind of um, edges where you wouldn't naturally get that with a, a more um, controllable brush. So I like to use these brushes just to give myself that, um, that softness. So that looks good in through there. It's, I'm just kind of following what I'm seeing in the picture and there's a little bit of black or dark fur coming in through there. Um, I'm going to go and do that other ear while I've got this thought process on my on my head which is the real dark almost black kind of fur coming in through here and then this one's got a little bit more on it so we're going to just kind of bring this out to the tip in through there and then it comes kind of down in this area and this here is pretty dark um, on the inside as well so I'm going to just kind of allow a little bit of a blend to happen in through there I'm going to, this whole part in through here, I'm going to scoot some black down in between these ornaments because I feel like if the cat's not black down here, it's very shadowed. So I'm seeing a lot of dark, dark whatever, dark fur or something down in through here. So we're just going to make that pretty dark. Um, there's also coming, uh, the, this side of the ear I think is a little dark in through here. So I want to just make sure that I've got... Um, that taken care of. So that's pretty dark in through there and it kind of cuts into here too. And then the area behind here is just kind of like a brownish muted color. So I'm going to put a little bit of brown on my brush and just kind of wipe it off on my paper towel. So I've got brown and black on my brush to just kind of get this area back here. Mm, I think maybe a little bit of my tan too. I want it dark, but I want it kind of muted. There we go. So this was black, brown, and a little bit of tan <laughs> to get this color back in through here. And if you felt that you needed a smaller brush to get into these little spots, feel free to um, to hit it with a, with a smaller brush. I just know that these little details back here are not going to be super important once I put the rest of the... Um, details into the painting so I'm just kind of hitting it whatever um, as long as I can get as, uh, enough of a color that I like that will be fine so that looks pretty good I'm going to use this color combination that's on my brush right now to just kind of hit inside this ear because this looks pretty dark but I'll, I'll hit it um, with a second layer later I like this color for this patch in through here so um, I'm going to use this remnants in through here. This is uh, kind of like a real muted blackish brownish kind of color. There's a big patch around this eye. So I'm, I've am i got very little bit of paint on my brush just using the remnants on my brush to create this dark um, patch around this eye in through here. And then it kind of comes up in through here and is actually all along the top of the head in through here and then it's going to start to shift into that um, kind of blondish color but it might be a little bit might be a little bit of it in through here too this little darkness before I shift colors to that blonde I just want to
put my head back here, make sure, I think I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of brown just to make sure that this is deep, uh, deep, dark enough over on this side. So on my dirty brush, I just picked up brown to put a little bit darker of a base in through here before I put that blonde color on top of it because I think the blonde color on top of this will be too light in this particular area. So I'm just putting a little bit of brown um, as a stable base and there's a dark spot in the, this ear too. So just a little bit of brown is gonna start um, the transition into that lighter fur. So I'm just giving myself and I'm not really doing a super special brush stroke at this point simply because um, the the hair or the fur on this cat um, is not super evident as to all the directions it is going and I feel that on our on our future layer that we're going to be putting we'll be able to um, get the hair to or the fur to have more direction to it but right now I'm just kind of working on the patch patches of color um, I feel I might want to put a little bit of uh, just a tiny bit of this darker tone maybe underneath what's going to be my um, my fit my my face so this is just a tiny bit of the remnants on my brush just kind of toning down or darkening this little bit of an area that's going to be underneath um, the body so that looks pretty good again just the remnants on my brush and this will make sense in a minute when I start to add that blonde color so I'm kind of just giving it a darker under base so this part looks like it's in the shadow and then this part over here is going to look like it is in um, more of the lit up area so that looks pretty good I'm now going to um, not wash my brush I was thinking about washing my brush but again I wanted to kind of go from dark and bring it out to the light so I'm just gonna pick up a tiny bit of that blonde color now and put that in this area over in through here so this is gonna be my darker area working my way up towards um, the lighter area and I might add a little bit more redness to this um, as I, as I progress through the fur but again this is just my base coat that's just starting the process uh, the face has a little bit of a white section in through here and then the whole left side of the face is white so this looks pretty good and this uh, blonde color kind of looks like it comes down underneath here but I can't really see the bottom of the cat because there's decoration so I'm just imagining what it is <laughs> I'm using this blonde color in the ear up in through here and then this little patch in through here is getting some and then it comes down the side of the head over in through here just a little bit I might have been a little bit too far but that's okay <laughs> put in a little bit in through here and then I'm gonna hit the um, nose with a little bit of pink so I'm washing and drying my brush and I am going to uh, just take a little bit of red and white just a teeny tiny touch of both on my brush and go in for where I want my nose to go so I'm just gonna kind of put this little pink area in through here just itty bitty bit and then down in through here and on that mouth so something like that then I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna hit the the fur itself so the fur I'm gonna mostly do with my tan and white. So I've got tan on my brush. So this is just the original color that we used. I feel like this cat probably has some longer fur in through here. So I'm just gonna kind of start pulling this down as if I know what the fur direction is, but the photo doesn't really, <laughs> doesn't really help me out on this one. So we're just gonna kind of imagine that that's the direction the fur goes. I feel like the fur is probably pretty long over here. So I'm gonna pick up some tan plus a touch of white on my brush and maybe give it a little bit uh, more length over in through here and maybe pull this out just a little bit in through here. I feel like the fur on the neck would probably be longer on the, on the sides of the face and on the neck than it would be on the on the face itself so we'll, I'll put it a little bit shorter there and it, right now I am using a little bit of a directional brush stroke and then on the face here I'm going to pick up again a little bit of my tan and white and just kind of give myself what would be some little cheeks maybe a little chin in through here 
And I'm not doing much at this point, just kind of giving myself a second layer. And I will amp it up and make it look all nice and fully rendered by the time I'm done. But this is just kind of getting me started. And then a little bit of white on this forehead with my tan. And this can kind of pull into the, the other little section. So again, I am using a little bit of a directional brush stroke when it comes to this section in through here just because it is the lighter fur on top and you can see the direction of the brush stroke. So sometimes it makes sense to do it, sometimes it's not necessary. <laughs> so you just have to kind of feel it out when you feel it is in fact necessary or not. So now I think that's pretty good for my first layer on this cute cat. So I am going to be using, um, I'm going to use my small brush, my small round brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put this brush away, take out your small round and get ready for the next step. All right. So what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint the eyes, the nose and the mouth. I'm using my number two round brush. The colors that I'm going to be using are tan, brown, blue, white, and red. And if I use any other, oh, and black. And if I use any other colors, I'll let you know. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to be identifying where the pupils are and the color part of the eyes. We'll be putting some little sparkles in them and then we will um, put some nostrils on and put more definition in the nose and the mouth. The cat is in the dark underneath the tree, so the pupils are huge on this cat. So the color part is going to be very minimal around the edges. So I am going to first, because I used a very thin layer of black paint, I actually have some spots that need filling in a little bit more, so I'm going to first use a little bit of black. I, I don't know if I said I was using my number two round, but I'm using my small round. <laughs> I'm using some black paint to identify where I want my pupils to go. And then um, we'll be painting the details around that. So I've already identified kind of the big shape of the eyes. So I'm going to put a very large pupil in each eye. So something like this. I mean, pretty darn big is pretty darn big. And of course, you could, you know, adjust yours in a, in a different way if you wanted to, if you wanted your cat to look more like it was in, you know, more in a lit up area. The pupils could definitely be smaller, but I thought this was super cute. It was like the cat was just hiding out underneath the tree and got caught or something. So that looks pretty good on that one. And then the other one I'm going to have going in this direction, somewhere around here. And again, the eyes can be a little bit different from one another. So maybe one is a, a little bit different color or different size because again, maybe the cat's looking at you at an angle. Um, this one, of course, this left eye appears to be a little bit larger and I, I'm sure that's just because of the angle of the um, of the cat's head. I am also going to use a little bit of the black around what will be the colored part of the eye. So I'm going to go a little bit away from that pupil and just kind of give myself a little um, black outline. And you might not be able to detect it a whole lot right now, but once I uh, get the other details in there, you'll be able to see it. This is just kind of giving me my little my little barriers. So now that I've got that, I'm going to decide what color to do on these eyes. So in the photo, I'm not quite sure if this cat has two different color eyes. One looks a little bit bluer, one looks a little bit greener. So I'm just going to be um, an artist here and pick a color for the eyes. <laughs> so I have pre-mixed myself what I'm calling like a light bluish green type of a color. Well, just call it light blue for lack of a better terminology or lack of confusing us. Um, so this is it right here. How I achieved this was I used a little bit of my tan, which has brown and white in it, a touch of blue, and a little bit more brown. So my brown, when I mix it with my blue, has 
turns my blue more, steers it more towards the greenish side. Um, so I wanted to have it them kind of read as are they blue or are they green. <laughs> so this is how I've come up with this color that I'm going to be using. And again, you don't, you can make yours whatever color you want, but this is where I'm headed with this. So once I've got my custom light blue color, I don't need much on my brush at all. And I'm going to go ahead and color in this, um, this colored part of the eye. This actually looks pretty light to me. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to add more blue and brown to it because it's, it's too, too light for me on the, on the canvas itself. Um, I didn't anticipate it being that light, so I'm just making it a little bit darker shade. I'll use the light shade for some highlights. So we're gonna do, we'll do this, and then I can, yeah, that's gonna be, that'll be better. And I don't need much. I just, I can use the um, the darkness from the color underneath that um, that uh, black, that faint black tone that we used underneath. I can use that to um, tone this blue down so it's not so bright. And I don't necessarily want it to be super bright because this cat is in the dark. So I'm really just using a little almost glaze of sorts with this color on, um, on the colored part. So when I say glaze, it means transparent layer. So I just am using a little bit of water on my brush in order to get this colored part to emerge here without doing too much. I don't, again, I don't want it to be too invasive. Once I've got that on there, I'm gonna let these colored parts kind of dry for a minute before I add uh, any more detail to them. I wanna tackle a little bit around the eyes. So in these little areas outside of the eye, um, outside of the colored part of the eye, you can use a little bit of maybe your tan plus brown. And again, just a teeny tiny bit to give yourself just the essence of, um, you know, the other part of the eye. But you, again, a minimal amount is all you need to do. Just kind of getting a second layer on there, um, making sure that it's fully rendered. Maybe I need a little bit more brown over in through here. And I'm also going to use a little bit of red. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of red and brown on my brush to give myself a little, um, and a little bit of water, to give myself a little uh, essence of, I don't know if it's skin around the cat's eyes that's giving it a little bit of this reddish hue, but I'm just using a tiny bit with a little bit of water. This is red and brown on my brush with a little bit of water. And this is going to give me a little um, kind of reddish hue around those eyes, which is what I'm detecting in the photo. So again, sometimes you, as you're as you're working from photo references, you don't always know exactly. I'm picking up a little bit of black because it's darker over here on the side. Um, you don't always know exactly what it is that you're seeing. So sometimes it's hard to say uh, to 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 decide what to do because you don't know what it is you're painting. So when that comes to play in my head, I'm picking up a little bit more black. I tend to just say, okay, I don't know what it is, but I'm going to follow the color pattern. So that color pattern will guide me into making whatever it is look like it's supposed to look. So again, if I don't understand what it is I'm seeing, I, if I trust that color pattern, I, I usually can hit it pretty good. So I want to um, add a little glaze or a shiny part into those centers of the eyes. So I'm going to pick up a touch of black and an itty bitty bit of my tan plus a touch of water. And this is going to give me um, a, a, a shiny part on the eye as if it has contour to it. So again, black, tan plus a little bit of water and this is going to give that eye almost like that glossy look to it that it that it has um, that layer on top of it and we'll, we'll put some twinkles in it in a minute but this is just gonna get this started and then I'm also going to put um, a little highlight in the colored part so I can use my um, 
in my custom light blue, but I feel like I also want to use a little bit of um, maybe tan and yellow. <laughs> Again, you can really go steer it whatever way you want. I feel like I want to put a little bit more green in this side or a greenish tinge. So I went with a little bit of tan, yellow, and my light blue <laughs> and just kind of giving myself some extra sparkles of color in, in the eye. Again, not too much, just an itty bitty bit to um, give myself just um, some more interest, if you will, on the, on the eyes themselves. That looks pretty. And then a couple little sparkle dots within the eyes. So these eyes can be um, twinkling anything in their surroundings. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of my tan, give myself a couple of little twinkle dots. I don't necessarily want them to be super bright. They can, they don't even have to be the same from one eye to the other because this cat is in the Christmas tree, so it can have all different kinds of uh, twinkles. I just picked up a little bit of white, maybe put a little twinkle down here on the eye, maybe a little one over and through here, so you can really have fun with putting these twinkles where you want. So I'm thinking that that's pretty good on the eyes. I might fiddle with them a little bit more, um, but I'm thinking like I, that that works out. I'm going to now put a little bit of brown paint on my brush to put a couple of little nostrils. Well, I feel like I want to bring the right side of the nose over a little bit. So I'm washing dry my brush. I'm going to pick up a little bit of red and white. I want a little bit more pink on the top of that nose. So this is just red and white on my brush at the same time. I feel like this nose should be brought out a little bit more to the right here. So I just pulled that out just a little bit and a little bit wider down that center. So red and white and maybe just a little bit of water is giving me a little bit of a pinkish tone and just kind of I just wanted to reshape that a little bit before I went full on into where I wanted this to go there we go that looks pretty good so now I'm gonna wipe my brush off pick up a little bit of brown give myself a couple of little nostrils one in through there one in through here I'll put a little bit of black in them in a, in a, in a minute, but just wanted to kind of start with that brown. A little bit of brown and red is going on my brush right now in order to put a little dark spot down this little center area in through here, and then just a little bit kind of coming into that mouth. Not a lot for the mouth, just an itty bitty illusion of it. And then I'm putting a little bit more of that pink back on my brush. So again, just put, just red and white. I'm calling it pink, but I'm just kind of mixing it on the fly. You can put that underneath these nostrils a little bit. Uh, that looks pretty good on the nose. I might add a little bit more lightness to that tip of the nose. It's looking cute. I'm picking up a tiny bit of black paint just to put a little, little tiny shadow right inside that little tiny part of the nostril right in through there. And then I am that looks good. It's cute. And I'm washing my brush. I wanted to um, just add a little bit more to that top, the top of the nose. So just that pink went back on my brush with a little bit of extra white and a little bit of water. Just spread it out a little bit. There we go. There we go. Now we got a cute, cute kitty nose. And then we're going to be using our, um, what are we going to use for the next step? I think I kind of want to finish the cat. So we're going to be using our um, large bristle brush for the next step. So you can put this one away, take out your large bristle brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish the fur on the cat. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush to paint, but I'm going to use my number five round to premix one more custom color. <laughs> so the colors I'm going to be using in this step are white, tan, brown, black, red, and yellow, and that blonde color. And I'm making a, another color that I'm going to call Burnt Sienna. <laughs> so it's um, going to help with uh, adding the, the additional texture into these uh, patches of color. So I have pre-mixed my Burnt Sienna type of color here on my palette. How I achieved this is red, yellow, brown, and a touch of white. So it's in essence the same color combination as the blonde, only more red and yellow and brown and less white. So this is going to give me, I'm in essence adding orange, which is red and yellow, to my brown. And then I'm going to add just a teeny tiny touch of white to um, make it so it's not so deep dark. 
and this is where I'm headed with this. And this is, again, just going to help add more depth and texture to the fur. So this is where I'm headed. And once you've got that, you can put away your mixing tool. Now I'm in essence just going over and doing one more layer onto the cat. I'm going to start with my dark areas and work my way to the light. So I feel I need um, additional kind of darkness around this eye specifically uh, to make it more representational of the actual cat in the shadows. I do definitely need some more darkness down in through here, but more with the that new burnt sienna and that um, blonde tone. And then there's more texture in through here, a little bit more lightness in this ear in through here. And I'm just going to be going and doing another layer onto the cap. I don't really need a ton more in these areas back in through here, but if you felt that you wanted more or needed more, you could certainly put more in there. I don't even know if I'm going to touch those areas, but I'm going to start with a tiny bit of black paint on my brush because I definitely feel I need more around this eye. So a teeny tiny bit of black paint and I'm just going to kind of allow for a little bit more darkness within this, um, this area. And I'm very cautious about the amount of paint that's on my brush right now. I have just a teeny tiny bit and I'm really just using the bristles the firm bristles of this brush to pull these individual little pieces of fur. So that's what's going to give it this this great depth in the um, in the cat's fur, the great texture in it. I'm putting a little bit up in through here just to intermingle with what I already have. And now is the time where I am definitely using a directional brush stroke. So I'm watching my photo and saying, okay, well, this fur over here looks to me like it's kind of going in this direction. So that's where I'm going to be pushing my brush or pulling my brush all the time. And again, I'm not using a lot of paint, but because I'm using a brush that has firm bristles, it allows me to kind of really pull it and um, have it look like it's got the texture of the um, of the fur itself. So this looks pretty good in through here. I feel like I want a little bit more darkness in through here. And of course you could certainly add more paint to your brush or you could even put a tiny bit of water on your brush and that will help you to kind of pull them a little bit further but the water will add transparency to it. Um, so just be aware of that. I have too much water on my brush right now. <laughs> too much is okay in some cases, but not right now. <laughs> and then I, you can also use it just to kind of add the, the water on your brush. You can use it to just add little, um, little smaller areas, if you will. I definitely feel like I want a little bit over in through here. And again, I'm black with a tiny bit of water on my brush right now just to control and put these additional darker areas where I feel they are needed. I feel like this is pretty good up and through here. Maybe a little bit more with the fur texture in the ear. That looks pretty good. This ear looks pretty good to me. Maybe just a little bit more black coming in through here. And again, just kind of trying to follow the, the photo and wherever I'm seeing it's pretty dark. That's where I'm trying to emulate the darkness in the, um, in the cat's fur. And always doing a second coat helps me out um, to make sure that I've kind of hit all the spots that I want to hit. Um, sometimes just doing that one pass will um, make it look almost unfinished if you if you don't make the effort to to do that second um, pass on it. I feel like that looks pretty good. Maybe just a little bit more in through here. I said I wasn't sure if I was going to hit this, but I guess I am just so it looks like it's nice and finished. Maybe a little bit in through there too. That looks good. And just make sure that texture is good. So that looks pretty good. Um, maybe just a little smudge in through here. And now I'm going to start um, picking up some of my new color, which is my Burnt Sienna, on my dirty brush. And I'm going to start intermingling this 
over especially in through here I'm seeing a lot of it over in through here and once you put it on your canvas you might say oh it looked one way on my palette and I you know it looks a different way on my canvas so you can certainly adjust it as you see fit if you needed to have more red in it or more yellow in it that's going to be totally up to you as you go through the process you might find that you want to adjust it even more I might end up adding um, using I'm going to end up using a little bit of my tan or my um, or my blonde with it as well in a minute but right now I'm thinking that this is looking pretty darn cute so <laughs> I don't know I don't know how much more I'm going to need to do on it but uh, it's fun as you as you go through the process and, and you're you're starting to add these additional kind of layers of the colors and seeing how it's all kind of coming together it it for me, it gets very exciting in these in these end stages where it's like, oh, it's totally looking like that cat now, <laughs> you know. So it just gets it. It's a um, enjoyable experience for me all all the time. <laughs> so that looks pretty good. I'm trying to figure out where I might need a little bit more of this color. Definitely down in through here. So I just picked up a little bit more. I'm gonna introduce or put it, this down in through here again. I can't really see a whole lot of the direction of the fur in through here, so I'm just gonna kind of um, imagine that it would kind of come off the face like this, and then we've got this spot in through here. That looks pretty good, and then this is all the lighter fur. I think that looks pretty good. Just a little smudge in through there of the remnants on my brush. Um, I'm just before I move on I think I need to add a little bit of lightness here picking up a little bit of my tan on my dirty brush I feel like this ear needs just a little extra kind of that was too light so I'm picking up a little bit of brown just a little bit of more dimension in this ear over here there we go that looks pretty good. This ear is different color than that ear in the picture. In case you're wondering, a little bit more brown on my brush. There's a little, there's a dark kind of spot on this ear. Just a little bit of black. I'm not sure what that dark spot is, but we just go with it. There we go. That looks cute. Um, over here, I'm going to pick up just a little bit. I'm going with a little bit of that blonde color just to add these little pieces of uh stray fur in through there and I'm going to pick up a little bit of the blonde color up in through here and again I hardly have any paint on my brush I can't stress that enough when I'm doing um, fur and hair that I don't have a lot of paint on my brush because if I put too much paint I end up blending it too much and it ends up um, just looking like one solid color and I want there to be this for me I like the dimensional element to it So that's why I am very cautious with the amount of paint that I have on my brush and I can always add more paint um, I actually want this to be a little bit darker So I'm picking up a little bit of brown and that burnt sienna color just right in through here And of course you could be using a smaller brush too if that um, if that works out for you so I'm thinking that that's looking pretty good as far as um, the dark areas and the dark patches and stuff so I'm going to now uh, wash my brush so I can hit the light areas on the cat so I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I don't necessarily want this to go all the way white in the whole thing so I'm gonna use a combination of my blonde and white down here and then I'll probably use more white up in the face so I'm picking up a little bit of blonde and white on my brush and just kind of giving myself another that's probably too yellow or too too gold so I'm gonna back that off with a little bit of tan there we go tan and white there we go I do want it to be darker down here, but I don't want it to necessarily read as something other than I feel like this part of the cat is probably white. Again, I can't see the whole cat in the um, in the photo, so I'm guessing. Um, but as I come up here, I think I'm going to use more of my tan and white on this little um, little cheeky area right in through here and then on its little chin something like that 
I'll probably put a little bit more white on in a minute, but I just want to kind of work my way towards that white without um, without going too much. And we'll put whiskers on it later too. I'm picking up a tiny bit of white paint now. Get right in between these eyes because I feel like that is pretty light in the photo. And then maybe just a little bit on these um, little parts by the nose and maybe just a little bit on that chin. <laughs> I don't think the chin needs to go that light, but just a little bit to make it protrude a little bit more. So there we go. And through there, and through here, this left side probably should be lighter than the right side. There we go. And then the cheek itself, I can't really see it. It's going to be hidden predominant this area and through here by a um, an evergreen <laughs> from the Christmas tree. So you can finagle it and push it as, as much as you want or make it as bold as you want, but I'm going to just kind of keep mine pretty subtle so the Christmas tree can kind of be in front of it, but I am putting a little bit more white on a little bit in through here just so it doesn't look too flat. And then we are, you can fiddle with it as much as you want. We're going to be using, um, we are going to use this same brush for the next step. So once you've got, um, is that what we're going to do? Yeah, we're going to use the same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, fiddle with it as much as you want, um, and then wash it and dry it and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to do the first layer to the evergreens. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are black and green. So this is going to be the Christmas tree branches. <laughs> so I really want to have a lot of dimension in this. So I'm going to have a lot of dark um, branches behind these ornaments. Later, we're going to put a couple of branches in front of these ornaments, but we'll reserve that for later because I want to get the ornaments done. But um, those ones are going to be lighter anyway, so I'm going to put my real dark ones th in the back right now. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush and I'm going to be alternating black and green so I can have some really dark spots and then maybe a couple of lighter spots. So I'm going to start with a little bit of black on my brush. I'm going to start over here on the left hand side. I want these to look like they're behind some of the ornaments, so I'm going to just kind of, wherever I want it to pop out, make sure that I go right up to that um, ornament and then I can kind of pull it down and start making these little needles if you will kind of coming out of that particular um, evergreen. I just picked up a little bit of green so now I can have some green showing in that as well and you can really have a lot of fun with kind of de deciding where you want these to um, kind of come out of. Just think of them as needles of sorts. Uh, you can have little peekaboo spots in between your um, in between your um, branches to your background. I'm going to have, um, I think I want to do this one now too. I was going to have a couple of them that I was going to do later, but I think I want this one to, to happen now because it's a super long one, so I want this one to kind of come out in through here. And again, black and then green, and you can certainly alternate those, um, those colors. You could even use a different kind of brush for this too. I'm having mine look really kind of like a soft type of um, uh, needle, if you will, on, on these um, on these branches. If you wanted them to really look like individual kind of um, needles, you could certainly use a different type of brush, but I think this will give it a nice soft appearance. I'm going to have another one here, but I want to do that one later. I want to have a, a lot of darkness coming underneath this one and through here. So again, I picked up a little bit of black. I'm going to scoot this right along the edge of that. <laughs> That's going to change the size of that one. Hold on one second. Water is going on my um, round brush to just kind of push this back a little bit. That might end up being a little bit smaller. Oh, hold on. I'm going to wash my brush. I want to push that back. That was too, that was too aggressive for me. So hold on one second. I have water on my brush right now. I'm going to just push this back just a little bit. There we go. If you can catch it fast enough with a little bit of water, you can almost correct anything you want. So then I'm going to put more black on my brush. 
and I'm going to um, just pull some of these needles up and through here. And again, I'm using the inspiration from from my photo as to the um, kind of display of these needles. But you could certainly, it, you know, put yours in whatever direction and and kind of um, formation that you want. And uh, there's a whole bunch kind of coming down in through here, so I'm just going to allow for those to happen. There we go. That looks pretty good. And then I'm going to have a big one coming in front of here later. I want a lot of darkness back uh, in through here. So again, just black and green alternating them. I'm going to kind of scoot that in, pick up a little bit more black. Back in through here, I don't even need anything other than color. Some kind of whatever my color pattern is going to be. If you feel that the direction of your brush matters, then you can certainly push your brush in whatever direction you feel is necessary. When we do our final little step on the um, on the evergreens, you'll be able to add little little additional details to these guys back in through here. I'll show you how to give little impressionistic brush strokes in order to um, explain to the viewer that the, that there this is part of the tree back in through here. So that looks pretty good. Uh, again, I'm going to pick up a little bit of black. I've got a, lots of darkness kind of up in this corner, up in through here. So this can almost be just a mass of color, if you will. Um, I'm going to have a couple of lighter ones in front of it later, but right now I just kind of want to get a real dark um, area back in through here in order to uh, get my ornaments to pop out. Uh, this can really go pretty dark around, almost around this whole ornament something like that but I don't want it to get confused with my ear so I'm going to pick up a little bit of green to make sure that it doesn't get confused with my ear and again this can kind of just almost be carefree in through here and then I'm going to pick up a little bit more black and pull some darker pieces down in through here something like that works for me and then I'm going to just put another little area up in this top left that looks good and then up in through here this kind of I guess this could kind of merge a little bit more there we go the green will tell it as a different story there we go um, up in through here again a little bit more black is going on my brush I kind of want it to come around this edge of this little crystal ornament and then it comes almost down towards that ear. And again, I'm making mine look very uh, wispy. You could certainly um, make yours look more independent with the individual kind of um, little needles. This can even hang over this ear a little bit. And then just little needles kind of coming up and through here, right behind this little piece of this ornament. There we go. And then we're going to be using, we're going to use this, oh no, we're going to use our small detail brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put this brush away, take out the small round brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint some whiskers. <laughs> I'm using my uh, number two round brush. The colors I'm going to use are, I think I'm going to use my um, tan and white. If I use any other colors, I'll let you know. So I don't really need to do much here. I'm just going to put a couple kind of coming up in through here. I can hardly see them in the photo reference, so, so we only need to hardly see them in the painting. <laughs> so I'm going to start with a little bit of tan and water on my brush, so tan and water on my brush, and spin my brush in my paint so I have a nice pointy tip, a little bit more water, and then once I've got my consistency that I feel is doable, I'm going to just put some up coming out. I think the, they're coming out somewhere a little bit above the eyes in this vicinity, so that's where I'm headed, and I'm just going to kind of put them in 
a couple coming out as if I'm seeing or I'm understanding where they are in the photo even, even though again I can hardly I can hardly see them so we're just going to kind of pretend like we know what we're doing here. <laughs> that looks good. And then I'm going to do a couple more on this side in a similar way somewhere in through here. So this is one of the joys of working with photo references. You're not always going to get one that has all of the details that you know you should be painting um, where you can see everything clearly. So this is where you either tap into your imagination or you can get other photo references. So if I knew what kind of cat this was, I could get I could do a Google search and say, oh, give me a cat hiding under a Christmas tree. And I could kind of use inspiration from another um, photo reference or get the idea of where the whiskers are, where, you know, certain shadows might fall. Um, so those are where you can tap in. I'm picking up a little bit of white now with the, with the tan because I know I'm going into this lighter um, area. Uh, so you know, again, using your own thoughts and your own idea as to where, you know, maybe whiskers should be coming out of a cat, that's awesome. But if you can't, if you, if you can't imagine it on your own, then you, use other references. I definitely am one who is much more successful using visual references than I am trying to tap into my own brain. My own brain doesn't understand where, you know, everything needs to go. Um, maybe because I haven't painted it enough or maybe because I haven't, you know, experienced it in my own life enough. Who knows what the reason is, but my, my brain doesn't allow me to fully develop every little detail without seeing a reference. So, in these case scenarios, that's when you, you know, you, you, I'm working with a photo that doesn't have all the details. So I'm tapping into my own thoughts, <laughs> but you could certainly, you know, use other references to, to help you along on, on tasks or jobs like this. I'm thinking that that's all I need to do. Um, you could do more if you wanted to, but I'm thinking that that's all I need to do. So I'm going to, maybe a little bit under this eye, <laughs> I'm going to be using my, uh, I think I'm going to use my, my large bristle brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and, or wash your big bristle brush and get ready for the next step. <laughs> All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish the big ornaments. So these three ornaments in through here. I am using my large bristle brush to paint. The colors I'm going to use are lavender, gold, white, blue, and yellow. And if I need or want to go into any other colors, I'll let you know. I might go into my red too, but I'll let you know. So what I'm going to do is I just want to make them really sparkly. They are sparkling everything in the atmosphere. So I'm going to have white sparkles. I'm also going to have little blue sparkles and light yellow sparkles. And I just want to sparkle them up. <laughs> so I'm going to create a bright blue and a light yellow, which I have already magically done on my palette. I'm using my number five round to premix these colors. So here's my bright blue, which you can see how different it is from that light blue that I made for the eyes. So this bright blue is just cobalt blue with a little bit of white in it, a little bit of white, and it creates this really vibrant, like super robin egg sky blue type of a color. So that'll be one of my uh, sparkle colors. And then the next one is going to be this light yellow. So I just got to that with just yellow and white. So my chrome yellow plus a little bit of white is going to get me into this nice light yellow. I think while I'm doing this, I'm going to definitely make a pink too. So red and white is going to be pink, kind of like I made for the nose, but I've made that on the fly. Now I'm going to actually just make a pink. So red with a little bit of white, and that'll get me a nice pink uh, sparkle color too. You know, you can't have sparkles without pink, so we're just going to go for it with some pink too. All right, so we got bright blue, light yellow, and pink. 
that are going to be part of our sparkle making. I'm going to use my large bristle brush, but I might um, alternatively go into my um, my round brush as well if I don't get the dimension that I want on these sparkles. So we started with brown, which brown might be in the equation too, brown, gold, and lavender. So those are my base colors. If I feel I want to do more with those, I can certainly do that. So like up here, I feel like I have a little bit of work I should be doing up there. I have a little bit of work around the edges of this one that don't feel finished to me. Um, and then I can add my sparkles. My sparkles, again, are going to be just little polka dots. So what I'm first going to do is just uh, clean up any of this, the, the main um, layer that I want to clean up. So I'm going to do the same process that I did originally. So I have my lavender on my brush and if I feel I wanted any more of that lavender, maybe I want a little bit of that lavender down in through here so I can add it elsewhere. It doesn't just have to be in that same, you know, that original section. Maybe I want to add it in, a, in other areas in order to get that extra kind of shine to it. I feel like I want a little bit more brown on this one too. So I just picked up a little bit more brown and I'm just kind of deepening this little corner of the, of the ornament over in through here. I feel like I want the top a little bit darker too. So I just picked up a little bit more brown towards this top. And if, you, if I had any little edges, to modify, I could certainly do that. So I feel like that looks pretty good on that one. So I'm gonna do that same process for the other ones. If I felt I wanted more gold, I could do that, but I feel like I'm good with my gold. This one over in through here, I feel like this one's pretty good. I just picked up a little bit more of my lavender just to maybe pop a little bit more on in through here. I'm picking up some more, um, I'm gonna go gold and brown on my brush right now. I feel like this could have a little bit more um, depth in through here. So this is gold and brown. Plus I had a little boo-boo from my um, cat making. So <laughs> we're gonna just make sure that that's taken care of. And you don't have to go super heavy with the paint. Um, think of this again as just little sparkle marks. And whatever doesn't go right, we can hide with part of the Christmas tree with the um, evergreens to it. So just know, again, it doesn't have to be perfect. And you can have little dark marks in the middle because those will act as little um, additions to the shiny spots and you'll see how that'll play out in, in just a minute here. So that looks pretty good. This one up here, I think I just named a little bit more darkness over here. So I added a little bit more brown and get some more darkness down in through here. There we go. Just make sure I've got some, some good dimension on here and fix this little spot up in through here. And because I didn't wash my brush, I've got the lavender coming off too. I've got the um, gold. I'm picking up a little bit more gold because I feel like I want a little bit more gold over in through here. And now I can start, um, now that I've got that accomplished, I can start adding my sparkly marks. So I'm using all these colors that I've created, um, the, the vibrant tones in order to sell the story that these um, ornaments are reflecting stuff around them, all the shiny lights in the trees. So I don't need a ton of this this color added to these, but I do want a little bit. So I'm gonna, I washed and dried my brush. I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of the bright blue and I'm gonna dab it off on my paper towel. And I'm just gonna kind of pick a couple of little spots where I can just add these little hints of sparkly blue stuff. Not a lot, just little, little tiny, spots here and there. Not enough for somebody to say, oh my god, there's blue in there, but enough for it to sell the story that it's reflecting maybe some blue little twinkle lights in the, you know, in the atmosphere or in that Christmas tree. So that looks good. Uh, maybe a little bit more up and through here. I feel like I want a little bit more up and through here. That looks pretty good. So now I'm going to, uh, you could wash your brush or 
you could do as I'm going to do and just pick up a little bit of pink. <laughs> I'm just picking up a little bit of pink and this is going to give me some pink dots. <laughs> so this is, again, I'm just going for a sparkle. And if you feel as if your brush is making too big of a mark, you could certainly work your way or use the, um, use the, a small round brush or one of the round brushes, which I might tap into in a minute, but right now I'm having fun with this brush and I'm letting happen what's happening. I'm not overthinking it. I'm just allowing for some sparkle marks to occur. Um, this one over in through here, I feel like I want some of this pink kind of down in through here. And again, I'm, I'm just not overdoing it. I just want it to look like there's some little sparkles here and there. Um, now I'm gonna, I just wipe my brush off on my paper towel. I'm picking up some of my light yellow color and I'm gonna pop in some little bright little yellow sparkly marks. And again, I'm probably gonna um, tap into my round brush in a minute, but right now, I'm, I'm doing all right with this brush, just kind of using the corner of it, but I think I'm going to want those more individual just type of um, sparkles in a minute, but I'm going to just work with this for now to give myself like hundreds of little marks. And then when I want those uh, little defined ones, that's when I'll pull out my, my round brush when I want, you know, little singular ones to, to really pop. That looks pretty good and and you can see how you know maybe this side is looking like it's more um, you know reflecting some of the yellow lights now I'm gonna without washing my brush I'm gonna pick up some white paint so white is going on my brush right now and this is gonna give me those really bright 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 ones and I think I feel like I'm 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 pretty ready to in a second here uh, move to my round brush because I, I don't want this to be too um, soft of a look. So I'm, I'm switching to my round brush right now. And so this is my number five round brush. I'm going back into that white. This is gonna allow me to just have more individual dots in, in, the, um, in the ornament. So it, it'll look less, um, um, it'll, to me, it'll look more shiny. I don't know if I'm saying it right. And you can alternate colors. Like I'm going to pick up a little bit of my light yellow with my white and just allow for these sparkle marks to happen. You might find that you want, you know, a million. You might find that you want yours to look more like a piece of glass and it's just, you know, sh one shiny. But I'm making mine look more like, um, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, more like sequency, sparkly, like it's got that sparkle kind of um, texture on it. If you want yours to be just a smooth kind of glass type of look, you might want to just go for, um, you know, that gradated type of um, sheen on it. And I'm just kind of making more and more and more. <laughs> I'm thinking that that's looking pretty sparkly, so I'm gonna move on to this one over here. So again, I'm just going white right now, uh, and you can do any any colors that you want, white, yellow, pink, anything that's gonna give you that um, that fun, sparkly type of look. And you, you know, leaving some of those dark spots in between is gonna allow you to have um, almost, like the, I don't want to call it the shadows between them, but more of um, that textured look to it. I keep picking up my light yellow. I'm feeling like I'm really digging the light yellow, <laughs> maybe a little bit of the light pink. And of course, make yours into whatever you want. This one's going to be well hidden behind um, some of the evergreens and the other decorations. So as you're going through your process, if you're thinking that you're going to be hiding a lot of this with um, with those exterior kind of decorations or the branches to the tree, then you don't need to go full on and do this sparkle thing over the whole thing. But if you wanted to, you certainly could. You could, you know, and put little sparkles here and there. I feel like I want some kind of blue ones over here. So I'm pat tapping into that light 
or bright blue kind of color and once you've got this done of course you can have so much fun with this and just kind of keep going and adding as many little sparkles as you want I feel like I just want a couple down in through here and once you've got it as sparkled up as you feel it could or should be or you want it to be we are going to be using um, what are we going to use for the next step I think we're going to use um, we're going to go back to our large bristle brush for the next step so you can put this brush away and again just put the sparkles where you feel they're going to um, benefit you as as much as you want <laughs> so you can put this brush away take out your large bristle brush and get ready for the next step all right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish the evergreens or the Christmas tree. I'm using my uh, large bristle brush. The colors I'm going to use are black, green. Um, I'm going to probably use a little bit of that gold, uh, light yellow, and that might be it. If I use any other colors, I'll let you know. So I do want a couple of... Um, branches to cross over these guys in through here so I'm going to put a big one kind of coming in through here uh, another one in through here I might put a couple of little branches or needles kind of coming in through here and then I want one crossing over part of the cat in order to make it look like it sits back and I might fill in this a little bit more too in through here so I'm going to, again, start with my dark and work my way towards the light, but the ones that are in front of these um, ornaments are going to be a little bit lighter than I have these ones back here. So that's where I'm going to tap into maybe a little bit of that gold color as I'm creating that base coat for them. Um, but I have a darker one kind of in through here, so I'm going to start with this one first. This is where I'm going to... Oh, so my colors, I think I said, were black, green gold light yellow I think that's it okay so I'm going to start with black and green to give myself one kind of coming over in this direction I really want the cat to look like it is you know hidden or peeking <laughs> so and plus I'm it's not really my idea <laughs> this is the photo is telling me that this cat wants to be like this <laughs> so I'm just kind of going with what that cat has already um, experienced or is telling the viewer. So again, just kind of my green and black, giving myself these um, little wispy needles kind of coming off of the, um, the branch itself. So that looks pretty good. And then if there was any little additional pieces that I wanted in through here, I could feel like I could get away with a couple more crossover pieces in through here and then down here I want to definitely fill this in a little bit more so I'm just going to pull in a couple little additional branches and needles and stuff in through there and we'll put a final layer of um, just little tiny highlight pieces on as well. This looks pretty good up here but I want to have a couple little uh, pine needles maybe just coming off the top of the canvas just to you know put this one behind um, something this looks good for the area that I have them in so now this is where I'm gonna put a big one coming over here so I have my black and my green on my brush I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of that gold as well um, in order to just give myself another um, shade or a little bit lighter shade I want this to I kind of want a couple in through here. I kind of want one sneaking back from here. And this one's going to be kind of coming out this way. That's a little bit too light, so I'm picking up a little bit more black and green on my brush. And just giving this one a little bit of life in through here. Then I'm going to have one coming. I want this one to be a big one. Let's go from up here this is going to cross over I'm picking up a little bit more black just so I can see what I'm doing here I can always add more lightness to it in a little bit but 
that looks good. I want this one to be kind of on top of this one. So it, it gives you some good dimension in through there. Now I can pick up a little bit of that green and a touch of my gold just to now give these um, edges a little bit lighter life to them. And just pull this down in through here. And again, this is where if you, you know, pull longer needles down if you want to hide something or add an extra branch somewhere. I want, there's one back here too that I want to uh, include. So this one is kind of coming down. This one covers a good amount, amount of this one. So, and this one seems to be behind that one. So I'm going to use a little bit more black on this one so it can easily sit behind the other one without much effort. So like this, and we're going to have um, some, a uh, couple of lights in the, in the tree too, so those are coming as well. Just gonna kind of bring that down like that. And I see a couple of long needles that are kind of coming down in through here. So we're just gonna include those. Those are fun. And now I'm picking up a little bit more green in order to get this to pop on top of that one. And of course, you know, black and green are my dominant colors right now, but I will, I did use that, um, that gold a little bit in order to um, get a little bit lighter value in some of them. You don't have to do that too much, but if you felt that you know that was going to help, I am going to add some um, some highlights in, in a minute here. But just getting it on here and understanding where you want everything to go. So I'm thinking that that looks pretty good. I kind of want a lighter one up and through here too. So I have my gold black and green on my brush right now. I think I could get away with a little bit more of my gold and green and kind of give myself a little uh, essence of a light one kind of popping in through here. That looks pretty good. And then maybe a little bit in through here. I feel like I'm gonna need some additional yellow too in a bit and just some little there we go. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush because I feel like I'm overloaded with black and tan right now, which has a way of dulling it down. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm going to um, pick up some of that light yellow color and add some strategic highlights behind some of these um, needles in order to get them to look like they are being illuminated from behind them. So all I need to do is take a little bit of that light yellow and almost just kind of put it in between some of these um, these needles and that's going to give the illusion that they're being lit up from the other side. So we are sitting inside the Christmas tree and these um, these branches are being lit up from some light source behind them. So it could be twinkle lights from the tree, it could be a fireplace, it could be whatever you imagine it to be. So right now I'm just adding these bits of um, highlight. You could also use maybe some of that um, burnt sienna color with the, with the yellow if the yellow is too vibrant for you. Um, I'm gonna do a lot in through here because that's what I'm feeling I'm seeing in the, in the photo. Um, and not a lot down in through here, but we will add some sort of highlight down there. Uh, there's a bunch in through here because there's a there's going to be a light over here, and then there's some up underneath here. So again, just that light yellow is what's on my brush right now, and I'm just kind of popping it in between some of these um, these needles, and that's allowing for this really cool effect to make them look like they're being lit up from behind. Um, the, I'm feeling like over in through here. It's got some light behind it, but it's maybe not this yellow. So I can pick up a tiny bit of the tan with my light yellow, and that will kind of dull it down just a little bit and give it a softer appearance. I've got a little bit on these guys in through here, a couple up in through here, and then this one has a bunch in through here. So again, light yellow. I might go light yellow and green on this one. So light yellow and some green oxide is going on my brush right now to get these um, these little highlighted ones right in through here. These are going to be highlighted from 
a light that's going to be right over here. <laughs> so we're kind of putting the highlight on before the light source even exists, but <laughs> it'll, it'll make sense when I put the light source in there later. And then that looks good. I think maybe just a couple little, um, little twinks there, maybe a couple little twinks here. That looks good. And then down and through here and here, I, I would just suggest if you, if you feel you need to do something, um, I just put a little bit, I'm going to put a little bit of tan, light yellow and green on there, and then just very little bit on your brush. And you can just kind of pull a, a, just little bits of highlights. Hardly any paint is on my brush. And this is going to give me some nice texture within those pine needles without doing a whole heck of a lot of work. Same thing is over in through here. If you feel that some of these need a little extra punch without um, bringing them too light, then just use those multiple colors on your brush, but very little bit of each, and that will help you to um, get just little um, additional kind of texture in it. Something like this works out. I'm going to do this over in this little section back here too, but maybe just a couple of little strategic lines. I think I need to bring some more black back here. So I just picked up a little bit of black because it looks unfinished to me. So just a little bit of black and just making sure it looks like I've got the texture, the tree texture that I want. I think that that's all I need to do. I don't really want to pull it too too extreme. Maybe this can be a little bit more solid up and through here. If you're feeling like you want anything to, um, you know, be pushed back a little bit, put more darkness in it and it will sink in a little bit more. If you want it to pull forward towards the viewer, you can add a little bit more of those highlights into it. But I'm thinking that this is all I really need to put in here to tell my story. So <laughs> of what I'm looking to tell, um, we are going to be using our small round for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can make any little fiddling adjustments that you feel are would benefit you, and you can take out your small round brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our decorations, our the decoration details, I guess is what I can call it. I'm using my small round brush. The colors that I'm gonna be using are white, light yellow, red, gold, black, and maybe some brown. If I use any other colors, I'll let you know. So I'm gonna put a couple of Christmas lights like there's going to be one here, there's going to be one here, there's going to be a little ornament hook topper in through here, and we need to finish this crystal type decoration. I'm going to start by putting a base coat of white on my lights, and then we're going to go do some, some of the other stuff, and we'll come back and add the glow to our lights. So I'm going to start with a little bit of white paint on my brush. I'm going to have this one somewhere in this vicinity. Again, you can put yours exactly where mine are, or you could put them elsewhere. It's totally up to you. So I'm going to just kind of put a curved kind of base like that, and then just we're going to pull this out something like this. And this, these lights are really glowy in this photo. So they don't even have um, um, clean edges to them around the sides. So once I've got my shape in there, I'm going to just diffuse it or soften it before that paint dries. I'm just um, taking my brush and softening those edges. So when I go to do the glow later, it'll have more success because I'll have a nice kind of um, gentle edge to them. I might have had a little yellow on my brush too. <laughs> there, there we go. That looks pretty good. On that one, I'm going to go up to the other one. So this one's going to be over in three. And they're at a weird angle, so they don't, you don't even need them again perfect. <laughs> you never need anything perfect. So I'm going to, this is going to be the opposite direction. So I'm going to put a kind of a curved line in through here. And this one comes uh, a little bit down where the ear is, so somewhere in this direction. 
and I can just kind of give myself this fun, awkward, ovally pointy kind of shape like this. And there's another little bump like that. There we go. And then just paint it in with a thin coat of white and then soften those edges. So what I mean by softening the edges is right now my edges are really clean around. Um, and if I can just take my brush and just kind of diffuse it so it's not so crisp of a line, it'll make my glow making process a little bit easier. So you won't necessarily see that super distinct um, edge to that little tiny light bulb. So something like that. And my paint is going to be a little see-through at this point, which is why I'm doing this first layer on it so I can get um, it to cover. So now I'm going to go up here to this little crystal piece and I'm just going to, again, similarly to how I did the sparkly um, ornaments, I'm going to just incorporate some of the surrounding colors. Um, I don't know if I said I was going to be using my pink and my light yellow. I know I said I was going to use my light yellow. So I'm going to start with my light yellow. I might use some of my pink too. And this looks to me like a real um, graphic type of um, uh, display of little pieces of crystal or glass. So as I'm doing this, I'm really just um, trying to give it these um, more linear type of marks as opposed to soft um, blended type of um, areas. So I'm watching the the photo and I'm saying, oh, well, there's a really light area over in through here. So let me put some really light paint here. But again, I'm trying to do these um, just graphic type of lines. Like there's a little white line here. It's a reflection of something that is in uh, the atmosphere. And it's of a, this is like a little crystal type of piece. So it's got little cuts of glass that are making it look like it's, you know, almost like a little jewel, if you will. I feel like there's some pink in there, so I wipe my brush off. I'm picking up some pink. I feel like I'm seeing some pink in this kind of center area. So I'm going to bring in some pink in through there. Well, now it's kind of peach because I didn't wash my brush, so I've got a little bit. Oh, this was, there we go. We got pink now. Um, and you can certainly you know, don't, it doesn't have to be exactly like it is in, in the photo. You can certainly have fun with it. I also feel like I'm seeing a little bit of green because uh, it's reflecting probably something that's near it. I'm picking up green. I didn't say I was picking up green. So now we've added light pink and green to the <laughs> color. I'm going to put a little swatch of green in through there, maybe a little bit down at the bottom. I'm definitely going to tap into some more brown. So brown is going on my brush. And again, this is one of those things that it's tough to just follow every single little piece on um, the photo unless you were to, you know, really study it or super map it out. But I always like to have a lot of fun when I'm painting. So I don't necessarily get hung up in all those tiny little details. I'm going in for some bright blue too. <laughs> I can't help it. I see all these reflections now that I'm looking in my in the um, at the at the photo itself. I'm seeing all these other additional colors in this cute little uh, jewel of sorts. This little fun um, decoration here. So again, have fun with yours. I'm thinking that that's probably as much as I'm gonna. Do there. I'm picking up, I wipe my brush off, picking up a little bit more white just to make sure I have some nice white in through here. And then we'll we'll head on down to the other decoration. So again, sparkles, you know, little bright um, reflective marks in this thing. You can make yours as shiny or as subtle as you want. Maybe there's some little reflections down in through here. I'm kind of just freestyling at this point because I can't follow every single I don't have the patience to follow every single little line and mark that's in the actual photo. So 
I'm calling that good. <laughs> I think it looks kind of cool. So you can certainly uh, keep your keep going on yours if you want every single mark to be exactly the same. But I'm cool with this the way that it is. So we're gonna just leave that like that. So I'm going down into the um, the little hook thing down here. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm picking up a tiny bit of black paint. Um, it's there's a little kind of circular type of object in through here. I'm gonna put back on, on top of it some of the um, pine needles. But right now I'm just gonna put a little black circle like this. And then it kind of comes down at an angle and oh, it kind of splays out a little bit. That's okay. Something like that, that's fine. And then we'll just kind of put a little bottom piece and it's got a, I'm sure it goes up into the tree somewhere. So we're going to, I'm picking up a little bit of my gold right now. And I'm just going to kind of put a, a little illusion of a um, hook up in the, the top of that little branch. Picking up, a, I just washed my brush and picking up a little bit more of my gold. And I'm just going to go around here. I feel like I want a little bit more um, color. So I'm going gold plus light yellow on my brush, gold plus light yellow. I'm just gonna bring this around this edge like this, and then down this center in through here, like that. I'm gonna pick up some brown and just kind of darken this left side. And this is one of those things that you might not even wanna do this piece. You, you know, if you don't feel um, it would push your painting any more forward than just leave it out. It's not, it's not a, a necessity. Um, I think I feel like I need um, something in through here like that or something. Some kind of little hooky doodad. Maybe like that too. <laughs> We're just gonna make it up as we go along. <laughs> gonna pick up a little bit of white too and add a little shine right in through there. That's all I'm gonna do for that. That's not a big deal. I'm gonna wash my brush. I do feel like I wanna pull um, maybe even some shadow underneath here. So I'm just picking up a little bit of brown. I feel like I want a little bit of shadow underneath this guy here. So just a little bit of brown one on my brush there. And then I'm gonna pick up some black and green and just pull a couple of these little um, needles in front of that. So now it gives it a little bit more of a dimensional look and it kind of hides it not hides it like I want to get rid of it but hides it like it's tucked in the tree um, I've just picked up some of my green and light yellow on my dirty brush I feel like I uh, need to get just a little bit more on this guy and through here let's get that to pop just a little bit more there we go and now I'm going to go ahead and go to my well, wash and dry my brush. Hold on. I'm going to put a tiny bit of black right over on here. I feel like this needs just a little bit more something. There we go. We don't need it to do much. Just a little. There we go. Um, so I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm going to go into my lights in through here. I'm going to put a little housing on the back of them where, you know, it needs to connect to the tree. So I just stuck a little bit of black paint on my brush. I'm going to um, just give myself the um, little light holder because this one I feel would be visible. It is in the, in the photo. Of course, it's going right over a fun branch that I liked. <laughs> you could also put the illusion of the, um, the um, light wire if you wanted to. It's in the photo. If you want to do it, great. If not, no worries. And just kind of scoot it in between those guys and through there. And then I'm going to pick up on my dirty brush a little bit of green and tan to give myself just a little kind of highlight at the top of this. So my um, the lights on the Christmas tree when I was a kid had these um, the housing for the little lights always seemed to be like the same as the, the tree, <laughs> the same color as the tree. So that seems to be fitting with this particular one as well. I need one up in through here. You're not going to see it much, so I'm just going to kind of give myself the illusion of it. Just something quick like that. 
maybe a little bit of black just to give the uh, the outline of it. There we go. That looks good. And then I need to put some glow on here. So washing and drying my brush, I'm putting another layer of white on my lights. And then I'm going to put a glow around them. So this is another layer of white to get it nice and bright. A little bit of white, nice and bright. And then my glow around it, I'm going to probably go with some light yellow. Um, you could go red, pink, light yellow, whatever you want. I just put a little bit of light yellow on my brush. And I'm just going to kind of give it this real faint glow. You can even glow right onto the, um, in the atmosphere, onto the, um, whatever's next to it, the tree next to it, you know, the little branch next to it, whatever you want. I'm just kind of using my brush in a circular type of motion to have a little bit of glow on there. I can even put it a little bit on here. Oh, that's still wet. We need to go on to the other one first. <laughs> I was going to put it on the um, little housing for the for the light bulb, but it's still wet, so I'm going to just diffuse these edges a little bit more. That looks good. I'll go to the other one, again, using another layer of white to make sure that I have it as bright as I want it because the second layer of white is going to allow it to be non-transparent. It should be covering nice for you at this point. If you have any darkness underneath, it should be pretty much resolved at this point. And then you can, um, again, diffuse those edges if you feel you want to anymore. And then I'm going to pick up a little bit of light yellow. You could even put a little bit of water on your brush if you want it to um, kind of go out just a little bit more. I'm going to put a little bit more water on my brush. I think I might use a little bit of that pink too in a minute. So just giving myself this nice glow around it. And I'm using the side of my brush to and kind of as, as a bristle type of um, rubbing method, but you could certainly use a different kind of brush if you wanted to. That looks good. I'm picking up a tiny bit of pink too. I feel like I want to put a little bit of pink around this too. So, mm, should I want pink? No, I'm going red. I'm not sure if I said I was using red. I'm going red and putting red as my, yeah, there we go. Little red glow around here will work. Very thinned out, watered, watered down red paint on my brush. Give me a little bit of extra glow around there, and I'll do that around the other one as well. And then you can fiddle with it as much as you want. Make it as detail oriented as you want or as subtle as you want. And then we will be using, you, I'm picking up a little bit of my light yellow. We're going to be using this same small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this small brush. Now I'm like, oh, I want more detail over here. <laughs> I like these. I like these little pine needles kind of hanging down here. Um, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the lower left or the lower right. I'm using my small round brush. I think I'm going to sign this one in the lower left with, um, I'm going to go with green paint. I like to sign mine with my initials, but you of course can sign yours however you want. You can use your full name, you can use a special symbol, you can mark it on the back. Some artists like to hide their signature within the painting somewhere, so that's something super cool that, you know, if you feel so inclined to do so, that's up to you, because those type of decisions are all up to you. And that's going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a curious little cat in a Christmas tree. <laughs> I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.